Rob's arms are extended. Reserve seating starts now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Gripe House 2023 edition. Um, I've missed all of you. I've missed Rob, especially. I feel oh. like two weeks have been a long time for us to like not see each other face to face. We text. This is, guys, this is really mine and Adam's time. This is not so you guys are, you know, you're here. It's nice that you're here. It's nice that you watch. But really, this is about me and Adam. So Gripe House, as you all know, is our one time of the year that we dedicate um to being like all of the rest of the internet Basically, where we just yeah. complain about things and we don't talk about the stuff that we love we talk about the stuff that grinds our gears so yeah, it's healthy you gotta let it out you need a little bit of a steam exhaust every now and again it's got to come out not all the time you know not, not nothing crazy you don't want to be that person all the time but every once in a while you gotta loosen the valve you know so this is us loosening our valves for you this is true so i'll get us started with a couple of gripes. Um, my first gripe I wrote as when directors get vaulted to geniuses after one or two good movies, but I really at the heart of it just mean Barbie. So I'll talk about Barbie. Um, I like Greta Gerwig as an actor. I think Lady Bird is Bur Lady Bird. Lady Bird. <laughs> I think Lady. <laughs> it's about a, a female iceberg. Um, I, I like. I like Lady Bird a lot, but Barbie, this is like, how is this different than the Flintstones or the Brady Bunch movie? But like, we're vaulting it to like this echelon of perfect movie, sight unseen. Right. I think it's just, it's just that thing where you can just cycle ideas in and out every couple of years and pop culture moves so fast now that people won't even remember it. People don't remember the Flintstones. I mean, we remember the Flintstones movie, but you know, people, do people under 30 remember it? I don't know, you know? Yeah. I mean, like there is a certain amount of like, I want to celebrate talented filmmakers who have resisted falling in line. Right. But we're still throwing them in IP. So. Yeah. Right. Well, that's the other problem. Like, like, like Greta Gerwig, Margot Robbie um Brian Gosling should be in and I, I'll probably catch hell for saying this in quote unquote real movies not making Barbie all right Rob what's one of your your gripes all right so I uh, speaking of uh speaking of um feeding the machine from earlier um I don't know what to do about this gripe because I and I had this discussion with my students and 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 I'm not sure what to do um I don't want to use the word content anymore um mm. I, I don't I I understand why we say it I understand why it's become kind of ubiquitous because it's obviously a catch-all. It covers a lot of things and, and, and creative spaces are now much more open and democratic than they used to be. People create content. We're creating content right now, obviously. People make their living doing all kinds of different things, creating their content. Um, but there is no word more soulless for me. You know, people younger than us have learned to say content. That's what my students, they're, you know, my high school students, their generation, that they, they, they refer to movies as content. They refer to TV as content. They refer to the internet as content. And I understand. But can we come up as a culture with a, with a, a more soulful word, something that enriches us uh, 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 in the conversation more than sounding like we're doing our taxes? Like, I just hate that word so much. And again, I don't know what to do about it. I don't know what to replace it with. Um, happy, fun time, joy. Balls. I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna call it, but but I, I, I'm all, all for happy fun time joy balls. <laughs> My next one is um junket slash fan slash influencer critics giving away plot details. There was mm -hmm. a really specified one involving Fast X that came out yesterday, which oh. I don't think I would care if I knew. I just don't like the sentiment of I saw it two weeks ago. I'm the only person who counts everybody else's experience with this doesn't matter. Right. Like me having the info to leak is more important than hundreds of thousands of people's experience discovering it for themselves. So it's not even like a specific spoiler. It's just the arrogance that you aren't even giving anybody a choice anymore. You know, we used to make fun of like junket 
critics who would give away like inflammatorily positive quotes to get like a gift basket and access to stars. And it's not even like that anymore. It's not even as like, like it's almost like that was like cravenly understandable. Like now it's just, I think that I'm the only person whose experience matters and everybody else is dumb. And like I said, I don't even care what the detail is. I just think that the fact that you're doing it is kind of reprehensible. And another thing is like, quote unquote, real critics sometimes who make fun of the influencer critics also will in their reviews spoil two thirds of a movie, but because they don't tell you what happens at the end, right. they think they're not spoiling it. And it's like, it's an experience. It's not just like a simple plot detail. Like you, you shouldn't just uh, put your own experience over everybody else's. I think it's just a lot of critics back in the day, like, you know, were able to do it. And I think people who are in that field now need to look back and see how other people did it before without ruining everything for everyone. Um, my, uh, my next gripe uh, came up, speaking of Guardians of the Galaxy uh, 3, um, I was re-watching uh, the first two to prepare for that screening last week, and, and I remembered that, oh my god, these movies used to have opening titles, opening credits. The two, the two of the most fun parts of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, the first two movies, are yeah. the opening credit sequences, in which we uh, read the names of the creatives, <laughs> you know what I mean, and see the title of the film. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, many, many, many films still do that, but a good chunk of our blockbusters in the sort of post Christopher Nolan era era um, have stopped yeah. doing it because I think they think it makes their movies seem more prestigious. And a lot of blockbusters I've noticed have have moved away from opening title sequences, which I think are an art form. I think you know, for like just the Guardians movies, you know, for example, have have great music cues and. Um, I'm thinking of the, se the the second Guardians movie with little Groot dancing around. Like that's a fun opening sequence, and a lot of great screenwriters will write um, the opening credit sequences into their screenplays. Right? This is a this is a beat that we take while we're doing the opening credits. And um, I would just like to see I would just like to see a move away from not having a title card because it is something I look at now when I'm watching a new release. I will actually watch it and say, Do, did I get a title card? And and I, a good chunk of the time with blockbusters now we don't. Another one is um, the Alamo Draft House, Los Angeles and Chicago. Um, I went to the Alamo Draft Houses in Austin. Those were existing movie theaters that the Alamo chain took over. So those theaters all kind of were unique and had their own distinctive personalities. But from what I've seen in LA and Chicago, it's sort of become hipster AMC. Um, it's the same lobbies it's the same you know kind of vibe where it looks like you know they have these video vortex lobbies which are just basically like an ai's interpretation of nostalgia it's like i don't understand who this is for i understand like what you're trying for but it's in such a antiseptic way that it feels very alien and strange and uncomfortable um the food is expensive. They claim, you know, no talking, no texting. Um, but then they have waiters ducking in front of you serving food. They give you your checks while Dracula's dying in a movie <laughs> at the end, which they claim is not disruptive. Um, you can't get out of seeing a movie there without paying $50. So, like, whatever nostalgic play it has, is you're completely removed from it. So I uh, I used to be a big proponent of these chains, but I think like in the major metropolitan areas, they've really kind of just completely missed the shot and um, have turned into the thing that they claim to be the relief from. Okay. Um, I got three more quick ones. One is modern Universal Pictures horror. I think it's become infected by Blumhouse disease. Um, I think everything is wink, wink, nudge, nudge um, when it doesn't need to be. Um, everything is memeable. Uh, like Guardians of the Galaxy kind of became, for better or worse, like the MCU flavor. Mm -hmm. The rest of the way, I think that Happy Death Day kind of did that with Blumhouse and Universal, which is odd because Blumhouse, because Happy Death Day wasn't like this monumental hit, right. but 
Blumhouse used to kind of take things more seriously. And then I think as a as an extension of Universal Pictures, like Universal Horror is now just sort of all kind of, you know, like it just feels very online in a way that I don't like. Um, franchise spinoffs, we don't need franchise spinoffs. Like I like how John Wick Chapter 4 wraps up. I don't need Ballerina. I don't need the Continental. Like your lore is like understand what works about your movie like Keanu Reeves and the action I like Anna de Armas I'm not desperate for Atomic Blonde with Anna de Armas like by extension I don't need Mel Gibson in the you know television series of the Continental like what what are we doing and then last but not least um this is inspired by Evil Dead Rise ignoring the emotional reality of the movie um which in Army of Darkness, Ash is a quipster, he's a jokester, he only cares about himself. In Evil Dead 2, you know, his friends and girlfriend, like, are killed off by demons. But, like, he kind of has a beat or two where he's upset about it, but then he's just like, oh, I'm in a life or death situation, I have to be mobilized to action. In Evil Dead Rise, this is a nuclear family, and they act like strangers. And, like, when a little girl's older siblings and mother are turned into demons she's like not even crying or yeah. like catatonic or like if a sister has to face off against a demon version of her sister she's quipping come get some and it's like that makes no logical sense and that's one thing that i like about like the guardians movies is you can have things be as fantastical as possible but if you ground it in human emotion where you're just like, this is how Peter Quill would like as a person or Rocket as a raccoon with humanity and like compassion and empathy and stuff like that would process this. You could get away with anything, but like you have to ground it in emotional reality. So I don't know if this Gripe House was as fun as other ones, but I think we got a lot of I think we got a lot of good stuff out there. It was a lot of, uh, it was the, oh, we had some access to grind. And, you know, this is where yeah. we're in them. And it's not always schadenfreude. You know, it's not always fun. It's not always, uh, you know, but sometimes things need to be said. So, internet, take notice. We expect you to adjust uh, starting tomorrow. You have 24 hours to adjust all of your behaviors. Yeah. Uh, film 20, industry. Uh, you uh, you are on notice. You, you, you now understand the changes you need to make. And uh, we expect to see those things. I mean, basically right now. Uh, we will be back next week with special guest Patrick Bromley for another edition of Mean Jeans, where we will take a look at three movies that Gene Siskel gave one and a half star or less. And we will discuss those movies, what we thought of them, and what we think of uh, Gene's review. Um, so until next time, Rob. Uh, you know what? I think this week, we're just keeping the seats. We're not reserving them for you. Yeah, we're staying in them. We're not gonna, coming. we're gonna work on them. We're gonna try to make it a little bit more comfy. Yeah, but like, like this, next week will be more comfy. I know these seats were tough to sit in this yeah. week. I think, I think, I think you guys should just go. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Bye, everyone. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs>